here uses social media? Everyone, right? It's become more of a tool we use in our everyday lives rather than a mere medium of communication. Everyone uses it differently, though. On that note, I'd like to thank everyone here for posting pictures of their delicious-looking salads and beautiful sunsets. I prefer to use it differently, though. I'd like to post about something a bit more important, in my opinion, myself. I promise I'm not as narcissistic as I sound. If you look at my Instagram page, you'll find posts of my family, my childhood, and illustrations of my day-to-day -day life. If you look at them really closely, really understand the context, you'll find they paint a picture. They tell a story of a cause I hold near and dear to my heart, openness and adoption. As a Kuwaiti adoptee, I often find myself in encounters with different individuals who don't really understand the concept of adoption and have countless questions about how my family came to be. And of course, I'm faced with the inevitable question. Do you know anything about your biological parents? The answer, sadly to this day, is still no. But through conversations with them, I found that many adoptees, not only in Kuwait, but across the world, are stuck in conversations like these. Because, especially in a society like ours, where I'm asked, minu ahelich, before I'm even asked, how are you? Being open about my adoption is a concept that is highly stigmatized. Thankfully though, throughout my life, I had my mother, who always encouraged me to tell my story with pride and to hold my head up high wherever I went. So thank you for that. <laughs> and through her, I found my inspiration and my passion. And so today, my mission as a teenage Kuwaiti adoptee is to help others in the same position as mine to find the confidence to speak up and stand up against the stigma. That's why I believe in activism. It's not just a word. It's a tool for social change. It's standing up for what you believe in and fighting against discrimination and injustice. In my case, I primarily use social media as a conduit for my activism. And when you do that, you have to be wary of a couple of things, like performative activism, which refers to the act of engaging in activism in order to appear virtuous through tokenistic or superficial actions, like changing your profile picture or posting unreliable information. Through that, you are perpetuating a culture of complacency and lack of meaningful action, which moves the focus away and, re and resources away from people who actually need them and can actually enact meaningful change. Of course, talking through social media about causes that you care about and current events is important, and it's all about intentions. Here are some ways that you can make sure that you are a driving force behind your movement. Read. Educate yourself. Read about news and history. And although I'm talking about it a lot, please don't depend on social media as a main source of information. Use literature or articles. And for those with an aversion to words, podcasts and documentaries are often useful sources of information as well. Also, try to make a tangible effort, such as attend conferences, work with organizations related to your cause, and donate if it applies. And most importantly, I implore you all, speak up. Staying silent is worse than trying and failing multiple times. As Desmond Tutu once said, staying silent in situations of injustice is, cho is choosing the side of the oppressor. Now, personally, I like posting on Instagram. I love my social media. Admittedly, like a lot of the people in my generation, I'm kind of addicted to it. In fact, as soon as I step off the stage, I'm probably gonna post that I'm at this conference. I mean, there's really no shame in posting about the tiny things like delicious salads or beautiful sunsets that you see every day. But just like I was inspired to speak up about the things that I find important, I hope every single person in this audience finds something to take a stand on. Thank you.